recall walking under these trees and the cliffs, watching vultures on a nest, and there are these kids playing cricket on the side. So they would look through the scope and they would see a vulture and they would just go, Gid, Gid, because Gid is a Hindi for, for vulture. They would ask me, why am I doing this? And then I would explain to them that these vultures are so important because, you know, they feed on dead animals and they help prevent the spread of disease. And it gets to them. And I remember walking out of my Jeep and looking at this one particular banyan tree where there must have been between 12 to 15 vultures that were dead. And it was really sobering. It was like my calling to come and help the people of India to solve this problem. My grandfather was born in uh, Bombay, in India. I was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. Conservation biology and field biology and working with animals was never on my radar. I was extremely passionate about cricket. I'd envision myself playing the World Cup for Kenya, you know, playing as a professional cricketer with thousands of people cheering me and watching me in the stands. That was where my focus was. Being in the middle of a field where there are hundreds of vultures, walking into places where you bump into tigers, leopards, watching peregrine falcons flying by, I had never imagined that. I was a third year student at the University of Nairobi and I was selected in the squad to play the Cricket World Cup in Holland. You either play cricket or you focus on your studies. I then declined to go on the World Cup tour and I focused on my exams. I envisioned working on the charismatic megafauna like rhinos and elephants and lions. Munir, there's an organization that wants to train a Kenyan as a raptor biologist. How about you go meet this gentleman called Simon Thompson? So off I went, I borrowed my dad's car. Terrible roads, terrible potholes. I got stuck in puddles as well. And a young man, you know, with very tight shorts, blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, comes up to me and he says, you must be Munir. And I said, yes, Simon. I was wearing a cricket sweater at the time. And he says, I think you must be lost because there's no cricket match over here. When I arrived at his ranch, he took me around. There were a couple of monstrous eagles. There were some hawks. I had no idea what these birds were. And so he said, Munir, how would you like to go and trap a raptor? And I looked at him, you know, having never done this in my life. I said, sure. So we drive out of his gate. We take a corner and there's this beautiful bird sitting on a power line. So Simon just drops the trap out of the, out of the side of his door. We drive forward and literally within 10 seconds or so, he spins the car around because this bird is already on the trap. He's racing towards the trap. Midway, he opens the door, he dives out. He does this somersault and I realized this car is heading for the ditch and I knew I had to do something. So I jump into the driver's seat and I slam on the brakes. And then I look back and I see Simon's holding this bird in his hand. He says, here, hold this. I've never held a wild bird anytime. It's the calmest thing ever. It's looking straight in my eyes and it was like holding a baby. And Simon's fidgeting around and he's now taking blood. He's banding the bird. You know, I'm not shaking or anything. I just felt this sense of calm. And it was just a magical moment just holding this. And then he looks at me and says, all right, we're done. You can let it go. And I look at him and he says, just, just let it go. And so I squat down and I just place the bird and I release it. And this bird flies out of my hands and it was the most magical feeling. You just felt the energy of this bird flow right through your veins. Now you look at raptors in a completely different way. And you spend the next four or five years of your lives doing this. You develop a passion for it and you have the know-how because you have a mentor like Simon who teaches you not only how to trap these birds, but to do it in an ethical fashion. And even when we got on to work with the vulture crisis in India, Simon was there all along the way. We realized that whatever's killing them has got to be coming from the food. We looked at chemicals, we looked at medicines, we looked at alternative hormones, whatever it was. Once we figured out diclofenac was the main cause, our partners on the ground took it and ran. And I would go year after year after year, 
you know, and you see this eight-year-old boy who's now 18 and he's in college and he comes back to you and he said, hey, I saw a vulture out in the field over there. They were not here five years ago. These vultures are starting to come back.